This is a sheep. This was a sheep. And this one is sizzling sheep. This is cubby. He is not for eating. When you are cooking, you need to pay attention. This is called a ball, two tasty onions, some sheep, a bottle of milk, and two potatoes. And that will give you shepherd's pie. And I can assure you, it's yummy. I don't have to eat for the next four minutes. Anyways, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Nemo Pack. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Also, welcome to Dark's Kitchen. It's actually not honoring darkness, it's honoring the person who taught me that auto smelt and fortune stack. Thank you, Dark for being dark. This kitchen is nothing important, but basically I just wanted to play around with Farmer's Delight because I think it's a really cool mod. I also added a few fields for the ingredients that we need in the kitchen in order to have a variety of food. We have rice, we have onions, we have wheat, we have potatoes, and we have carrots. But the carrots are actually not for me, it's for the pigs. We also have tomatoes and cabbages. And for the first time in my life, I even have a composter to get bone meal. Because when you're harvesting the crops, you get like a bajillion seeds. Anyways, what is the plan for today? Well, if you guys remember last episode we did manage to make a power plant in order to get steel much faster and yes it's significantly faster however as i have already mentioned the setup that we have over here is temporary because this is going to generate us 500 rf per tick which is nowhere enough we need to get into serious power and we're going to try and do that today hello i don't like jerks Oh, and by the way, I did do a little bit of expansion to our base. This is our enchantment area, this is our tetra area, and this is my bedroom. And I do have a purple bed with a very nice view. Hey Cubby! Currently our goal is to get into mechanism. The problem is that in order to get into mechanism, we need the steel casing, and in order to make the steel casing, we need bitumen. So basically we need to extract oil. The problem is, in order to make the heavy engineering block, we need electrum grit, which you only get it from a crusher. So we have to make a crusher. As usual, this is going to be a very temporary setup, but I need to have some steel rods. So there you go. So making the mechanical component requires four pieces of iron. If I do it in a workbench, it's only two. Then obviously we're going to do it in a workbench. We need 10 light engineering blocks, one redstone engineering block, nine hoppers, 10 scaffolding, and eight fences. A projector would have been nice as well, but I'm a professional. So am I a professional or no? Yes. Very good. We have half a stack, that should be enough. Also, I have no idea how much RF this guy is going to need, but we do have an HP capacitor. So there you go. And we just drop you. You work. Perfect. You know, the professional should have thought about a chest. Hey Cubby, it does not consume that much RF. It's just 100,000. And we already have 24. No, 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 no. You're not going out. Obviously, we can start making heavy engineering blocks, but first we need to find oil. Another question is, where do we want to look for oil? Uh, maybe over there? So for those of you who don't know, immersive petroleum adds oil to the world generation. And the way that you find it is that you're going to need a core sample drill. It's the same one that you use in order to find ores from immersive engineering, but this one also finds ores. So you just put it in a chunk, you give it a little bit of power, you hold sneak and right click. After a few seconds, that should give us a sample. So there are no fluids. Okay, in this one? Maybe? Yes, 5000 buckets. Perfect. I have no idea if the multi-block structure is correct or not, but let us give it a try. It doesn't work. Oh, from here. Okay, first of all, let us give it a test and see how much power it's going to consume. Well, it does work. That's a good start. You are consuming quite a bit, but you did manage to give me six buckets. That's not bad. While the battery is recharging, let us also try and get the distillation tower. It's a little bit expensive. You can say whatever you want, but making this stupid tower with this resolution is impossible. It's incredibly small, I don't know what they were thinking. But based on the number of blocks, it should be okay. Although it's never good when you realize you have extra pipes. So do you form? No, this side? No, I don't really know what I'm doing wrong. I have counted the blocks and it does not seem that I have done anything wrong. I do not understand, so I did make a projector. We're going to try it with this. I don't get it, what? <laughs> As it turns out, it does work and I was just using the wrong slab. I had to move it by a little bit because it was facing the incorrect way, but now we have a little bit of oil. And if we also provide you with power, you should give me bitumen. Yes, finally. The texture of gasoline is kind of broken. Oh, that was it. We're out of power. The distillation tower is not consuming that much RF. The problem is the drill. It's okay, we have 12. That should be enough in order to make a metallurgic infuser, which is something that I really want to try and make as soon as possible because I really need pipes. There you go. Also, just in case you're wondering, I was thinking about a solar panel and look at the recipe. 
that's not gonna happen. I'm guessing in order to not get cheaty power, windmills have also been removed. So I don't really know how we should generate RF. It has been 20 minutes that I have been standing on this tree trying to decide what kind of RF generation we should have. Unfortunately, from all the cheaty methods of generating RF, none of them excites me. I want to go with diesel, and I really want to go with biodiesel, because the other diesel is not renewable. But in any case, I don't have the resources to do any of them, so we have to go mining. I should not have done that. Okay, we're safe. And if we want to go mining, how much mana do we have? We have a decent amount. I can upgrade my Terra Shatterer. Oh, and just in case you didn't know, if you have mana tied bellows next to a mana pool, the transfer of mana is much faster. Uh, we want you to be tier A. That's not gonna happen, is it? You also eat some food. Generate mana. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. We need like 10 mana pools? I thought it's a wiser decision to fill in the band of mana first and then waste it on the Terra Shatterer. Because there's a very high chance that we are not going to make it. Hello, Cubby. I actually came here because I remembered we did have a mana tablet. It's not much, but anything would help. Actually, we are not that far. Eat more food. Maybe we are going to need like two more mana pools? It's okay. I can wait a little bit. So it has been a while. I cooked some food. I chopped down some charcoal. And we have plenty of fuel. The problem is... We don't have enough mana. I did use my ring a little bit, and I think we should use it a little bit more. Cause we're just like half a mana pool away. Are we good? Nope. Yes, finally. We just pick up the rest and go mining. Oh, and by the way, I have made some cave illuminators from Astro Sorcery and I have placed them down around our base. So mining should be relatively easy. Meaning that there are not going to be that many nasties around. So you should do a 5x5, five five, right? Yes, that is perfectly fine by me. Oh, this is so nice. There are no mobs. Yeah, the amount of cobblestone that I'm getting is too much. Uh, well, we are next to lava, so I can get rid of them. You can infuse your Terra Shatterer with Elementium and that should get rid of the cobblestone. But the problem is, uh, I kind of need cobblestone as well. And this is why I also don't have auto smelt on this Terra Shatterer. Because if I work around the base, then I'll be smelting every single piece of stone. Anyhow, let me do some mining and I'll be right back. I have done a decent amount of mining, I have processed all the ingots and we are relatively well off for the project that we want to do. We are not going to go with the diesel generator and instead I think we are going to go with the gas burning generator using ethylene. Because if this guy generates the same amount of RF that we saw in all the mod 6, then I don't need to upgrade my power generation for a very long time. However, we have a bit of a situation. You might actually notice it from here. So our oil production facilities are on the other side of the river. My base is on this side. At first I was using the boat, but that is not very convenient. Then I decided to make a bridge, but bridges are boring. And then I saw something in create by accident. It's called a gantry carriage. And the good thing about them is that they can also carry structures, so we can have a floating bridge. So let us give it a very small test together. So if we have a gear shift with a lever, and for testing purposes we use a hand crank, will it work? Okay, maybe the other direction. Oh yes, it's moving. I like that. Maybe we should use it. It's not going to be the fastest method of transportation, but I think it's going to be fun. I came up with a very stupid design, but it actually works. You can literally see it moving. Basically, I just want to have a very small cabin so that I can stand in it. It will take me to the other side of the river and then bring me back whenever I want. At this very moment, we are using a hand crank. So whenever we stop, the carriage also stops. But eventually we are going to hook it up to some sort of a generator and it's going to constantly rotate. I don't want it to do that. This is why I made a clutch. And if we apply a redstone signal, the carriage itself is not going to move and obviously we also have a gear shift so that we can determine which side the carriage is going to go if we apply a redstone signal it's going to come back and if i flick the lever it's going to go away i also figured out that brass casings are cheaper than underside casings so we're going to make it out of brass so did i mess it up everything moves yes everything moves and the best part is it also moves me it actually took me far longer than you would expect but ladies and gentlemen this is our bridge. I would like to mention that it is totally unnecessary, but it does work. So we flick the lever, the bridge goes away. Very cool. And if we flick it one more time, it will come back. I like it. Of course, there are a few issues. Uh, we need to have some sort of a button because I cannot flick the lever from that side. There is an item from Create called a toggle latch. And if it works exactly the same way that I think, which I think it does, we're going to use this. Basically what a toggle does is that it will change its state whenever you give it a pulse. So now the redstone is on and if I give it a pulse, it's off. So maybe for this side, we're going to have a button over here 
that should be okay and since all of my controllers are up there we need to have i don't know maybe a line of torches not having flight is my greatest pain also i'm not sure how much power we need in order to move a gantry carriage but i do have three fans yes finally we are getting somewhere because i wanted the signal to be inverted because we don't want this to be activated at all times there is one more item from create which is called an adjustable repeater and i think you can set a delay for the redstone signal so maybe we can put it to i don't know three seconds but let us see if it works so if i press the button it should go away in three seconds yes three seconds is too much because we also have the delay in redstone well i did remove the repeater that is too fast what if we have like one second that's fine because basically what i want to be able to do is that i press the button i go on top and it will transfer me into the mouth of a lot of crazy mobs. Also, in this mod pack, we do not have any type of wireless redstone except the Ender Overseer from Botania. You look at it, and it will send a redstone signal. And I think that is exactly what we're going to use in order to get back. So, we just need a redstone line, right? It should toggle it. Yes. Um, how do I get out from here? So, I am actually hoping that it works. I press the button. We go to the other side very pleasant journey we do whatever we have to do and whenever we want to go back we just go back inside the gantry carriage and look at the ender overseer we go back i kind of like it it's a stupid bridge i know so this is not going to be something incredibly complicated and it's going to be very temporary because we just want a little bit of rf we want to have ethylene correct so we need to start with a crusher in order to get biofuel obviously we are going to need a prc in order to make that ethylene and we also need an electrolytic separator in order to get hydrogen i did not make a sink yes here is a sink, which I'm assuming for the moment we can just put it over there. I should have made a wrench. In order to make a charge pad, we need polished blackstone pressure plate. We just need to charge it up a little bit, and then we should be fine. That is enough. Oh, you're plagued. Awesome. The first thing that I'm going to do after getting a quantum entangler porter is that I'm going to put turrets everywhere. Anyhow, here is the water. For the moment, we don't have any source of energy, so I'm going to use HP capacitors. And that actually activates the machines, which is very good. We have a few energy upgrades and I'm going to use them. So the PRC is going to require water, which I'm guessing this should be fine. And we also need the hydrogen. And very slowly, with a little bit of biofuel, we get ethylene so you are going to output from the front that should go inside our gas burning generator and we just connect you to the power the question is how much are you generating it's relatively fast this part of the mod pack is going to be incredibly boring and i have no idea how to skip it but basically what i have to do is that i have to charge up the capacitor banks go to the other side of the river at least the gantry carriage makes it fun extract a little bit of oil and process that oil in order to get bitumen i have to go back home craft some of the machines that i need and start advancing through mechanism I think our first priority should be two quantum entangler porters. It's not going to be as easy as you would think because with this setup it's going to be incredibly slow. But I will do my best. So osmium compressor is not that cheap. Oh and you need the integrated circuits. Okay, we are going to be a little bit screwed. Well, on a positive note, we have the ingots. I just have to make the circuits, which is going to be a pain. I think for the moment, we are going to start with half a stack of these circuits. Uh, I can't afford more anyways. Although worst comes to worst, I can go mining. I have been thinking. A digital miner is not that expensive because all we need is a steel casing which is easy peasy, two teleportation cores that should be also easy, logistic or sorters are fine, robot is a little bit complicated but that should also be manageable. I think we have everything? Yes, so I can just make the digital miner. It's not going to be something amazing at this very moment but at least it should mine for me when I'm working on the machines and I don't know just mine anything you find? Thank you. You're very slow but on a positive note you're just consuming 80 RF per tick. Also one very important thing we want you to silk touch since it is painfully slow i did make eight energy upgrades and we're going to have also four speed upgrades actually let us do two at a time 85 150 so maybe we can go to more very good 480 rf per tick another thing that we should definitely remember is that the digital miner is going to harvest all the ores and it's not replacing the blocks with anything else so we are going to have mob farms under our base therefore we're going to use a cave illuminator so it has been a while and this guy has almost mined 2200 pieces of ore you might notice a problem. There are no redstone. There is a very small chance that I have already mined all the redstone in this area, but that's a very weird coincidence. I really don't know, but we do have quantum entangler porters, so we can test it. We're going to set a channel for base power. You're generating 72,000 RF per tick. 
Holy, this is going to be very janky wiring, but I need a little bit of oil over here so that we get bitumen. I also had to upgrade the tanks because the basic tanks are garbage and we do have a crate on us, so we can use it for bitumen. We should get a decent supply of bitumen. That is good. I sometimes regret my decision of settling down over here because of these guys. And sometimes some of you guys actually tell me that it can't be as bad as I say and I'm exaggerating. I do admit that sometimes I exaggerate everything a lot but the problem is the montage that you just saw was just 10 minutes of playing time. That is my life. I also want to move our ethylene production, hello, <laughs> to somewhere more permanent. And I was thinking that we just do it over here. I have made a few garden cloches, but I don't think we're going to need more than two of them. And they should be able to process sweet berries. Of course, if they have power. I also think that one upgraded crusher should be able to provide enough biofuel to two PRCs. So we're going to have two of them. Also, we need to provide them with water. So I do have a mechanical pipe and we should just be able to extract from the same sink. Both of them have water. Perfect. Cabling in mechanism is always a pain, especially when you don't have access to ender IO conduits or I don't know, something like Xnet. But if I have not messed it up, this should work. It's just that I think we need more garden cloches. Two is not going to be enough. Or maybe it is. I don't know. And for providing these guys with hydrogen, I think we can just put the electrolytic separator over here and run the cable from the top. Yes. So water goes inside the electrolytic separator, we will get hydrogen and we can also provide water to the PRCs. Very good. We're getting ethylene, we have to get rid of the substrate. Which honestly speaking, that's actually going to be the easiest thing to do because what we need is going to be a logistical sorter. We put one drawer, we should definitely disconnect you and we give it a void upgrade. That should be fine. So something fun, uh, the reason that I was not getting redstone is that the configuration was wrong. This should be on zero. Yeah, there you go. That was my stupid mistake. We are getting redstone. But I have also made a few adjustments to our ethylene generators. First off, we are going to have four garden cloches because two was not enough. And instead of having sweet berries, we're going to have wheat because seed can also be converted into biofuel. Seeds are added bonus, so why not? We also have another quantum entangle porter over here, which is taking the ethylene from the PRCs and it's inserting it into this dynamic tank from mechanism. You don't really need to have a dynamic tank because I think the pressurized tube that we have over here actually has more capacity than the tank, but tanks look nice. Oh, and I forgot to mention that we have two gas burning generators, so that's a total of 140,000 RF per tick. Also, these jerks that you see over here are causing a lot of damage to me. So maybe we can have netherite armor, at least for the chest plates. Cause we did manage to find two ancient debris and I think we should be able to process it using mechanism. A crusher gives you three enrichment chain Chamber gives you two. I do not have an extra crusher, we're going to use this one. That should give me a bit of extra protection. Also, it does look nice. We have advanced into mechanism and applied energistics is now unlocked for us. The problem that we had was that in order to make the inscriber from applied energistics, we needed the ultimate control circuit from mechanism. Of course, they are incredibly expensive, but we don't need that many inscribers anyways. And since I want to get into applied energistics next episode, maybe we should find some meteors. Obviously in the morning. And also the main reason that I made the compass is that I don't remember seeing that many meteors nearby. There is one over here. I think it's a very wise decision that we check Check out that one first because it's across the desert and we can walk really fast on sand. Um, where's the chest? Did I already mine it? Oh, it's there. Engineering, calculation, silicon. Oh, there is another one nearby. And just before I go there, can we kill him? Hello, 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 hello. I just want the boss, no one else. Oh, I didn't know he does that. Um, did he always used to do that? Oh, you can hide under a house and you're pretty safe. And I can shoot him from here. Are you dead? Yes. Michal, wear your mask. It's always a good idea to check your map because I was going the wrong way. Why does it have to be buried underwater? Oh, there's a hole. I got a challenge. Oh, it's the perks from Astral Sorcery. Logic. We have all four. We can go home. So how do we want to do this? We need a controller, one drive, energy acceptor would be nice. Of course, we're going to go with a crafting terminal. And since we are incredibly poor, we're going to go with 1k storage cells and obviously garbage cables. We don't have that many charge certers quartz, so I'm just going to fortune some of the ores because we have fortune five and that should give me a very good yield. We have 53. Not that bad. So that should give us more than 100 flux crystals. The crushing wheels that we have from Create can also make us the dust. I don't really know if in the recent version of Applied Energistics you actually need to have an energy acceptor or not, but it's cheap. So let us make it. And it's a good thing to know that we can still grow the seeds inside an enrichment chamber. Although one thing that I didn't check is that how do you make silicon? Oh, okay. 
just quartz. We also don't really need to have a controller, but it's not the worst thing to have. For that, we need an engineering processor. So, energy acceptor, some cables, and obviously two inscribers. You do work, right? Yes. Here is the controller, so it's off the list. We also don't really need to go that crazy, so I'm just going to make two drives. So that is also off the list. I think the only thing remaining is that we need a bunch of logic processors and one calculation for the ME crafting terminal. That's it. It took me a little bit of crafting, but this is our ME terminal, and we can upgrade it to the crafting terminal. Also, storage is not going to be that expensive, right? So maybe instead of going with 1K, we go with like two 4Ks? Yes, I think that is going to be a good plan. We're going to go with two 4Ks because making a 1K is going to be easy peasy anyways. I just stole this quantum entangler portal from there because we want to transfer all of these chests that you see over here into our applied energistic system. This is the best part of any mod pack. Oh. I forgot that they fly. Anyway guys, by having an applied energistic system, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.